six four, three hundred twenty five pounds. Man, he make me feel like I'm small. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video, and the Ravens in the third round they select UConn defensive tackle Travis Jones. Now a lot of people are saying that this guy was actually a first round talent. And as he dropped and dropped and dropped, a lot of people wondered why. Um, and hopefully we don't find out why he dropped. Um, but anyway, the Ravens selected uh, another steal in a later round. Um, that is somebody that could have went a lot earlier. Now, Travis Jones, when I watched him, man, I, I love the uh, I love the disrespect. And I know that sounds kind of weird, but I, I love the disrespect that he shows because when he beats the offensive lineman that he's going against, whether it's the center or the guard, he lets you know, like, hey, I just dogged you, and I am going to forcefully move you out the way so you know you got dogged, and you're going to stay on the ground, and you're going to have a nice reminder that you just got whooped by me. And I love it. I love it. Um, this lets the Ravens get nastier up front. Um, and he, with him, he has, uh, he has very good control over his body. Very, very good control over his body. He has good balance. Because, you know, like for some guys, especially a lot of bigger guys, um, defensive linemen, really a lot of different positions, but defensive linemen specifically, sometimes if they are rushing the quarterback, uh, they, could, they could end up beating the offensive linemen. But they may stumble or something. They may trip. They may fall. And they may be going so hard after the quarterback that they end up tripping over themselves. But he has very, very good control over his body, in my opinion. Um, this, his strength, uh, just he, he's a very powerful player, very powerful player. When I watched him, I saw like if he beats you, that's what if he's one on one, even if he doesn't completely beat you, he's going to push you back. He is going to push you back. Now, of course, that was in college. It's going to be a whole nother uh, ball game in the pros. But so he'll be going up against much better talent. But he'll also be uh, with much better coaches and guys that can really take him to a whole nother level. So this is an exciting pick, especially when it comes to interior pressure, especially. Because, again, like I said, even if he doesn't beat you, even if it's one on one with the offensive lineman and he doesn't beat you, if he's engaged with you. Well, especially one on one, he is going to be pushing you back. He's going to be pushing you back. There's no way that you're just going to hold him one on one. And another thing to think about, because we know Calais Campbell, he was double teamed a lot last year. So just imagine Calais Campbell coming back. Calais Campbell got all this respect in the NFL. Teams know him, players know him, coaches know him. They're like, oh, yeah, Calais Campbell. We got to watch out for that guy. Okay, cool. So double team Calais Campbell and leave Travis Jones one on one. Leave it one on one. Uh, and, and now it's crazy because a, a spot that was once weak, once empty, and I mean the the disrupt the disruption uh, up front on the defensive line, um, it can be it could be even better. But right now it's at a uh, it's at a it's at a decent spot. Um, you got a lot of you got some guys who you know who they are. But also, you got some guys where they are unproven. Um, Calais Campbell, you know what you're getting out of Calais Campbell. Michael Pierce, you know what you're getting out of Michael Pierce. Two veterans. But then you have up and coming a guy who showed you some flashes. You have Justin Matabike. And of course, you, you want to get some more out of him. But all, all he needs is the shots. He needs opportunities. So you, you like what you saw so far, but you just want to see more. Then you have Broderick Washington. He was solid, but there's still a lot that you don't know about him. Last year, he played the most that he's ever played. And now you drafted a Travis Jones. So you know what he was like in college at UConn, but now it's to the pros. So it's a whole nother ball game. But this, with him, again, being a, a, a first-round talent and Ravens getting him in the third, it's like, I mean, it's not it, but it's almost like having another first round pick. But Ravens have been showing this draft so far. They going heavy defense. And I think that was expected. That was expected by most people that it would be mostly defense. 
But they like, yeah, it's it's been all defense so far. Except except Linderbaum, of course. Because again, we was Kyle Hamilton the safety, then Linderbaum the center, uh, then a Jabo, um, the DN slash linebacker, and now Travis Jones, the interior defensive line. And the defense was where the Ravens had the most holes, because they they lost a lot of guys. Um, and they, they got a lot of spots where they just seriously need to upgrade. Um, but the offense is, is, is definitely lacking right now. You, you traded away Hollywood. Um, and and I, I felt like they still needed a receiver even when they had Hollywood. Um, but we're going to see what they do. Again, it's still early in the draft. Still got the fourth and fifth and sixth and seventh and whatnot. You still got those rounds. Um, but now... It, this is where my concern comes in And y'all know how I feel about this Now we're getting ready to head Do the Ravens have another pick in the third round? I don't think so, but I'm not 100% sure They could trade up though But now we're getting to that territory We're getting close to that fourth round territory So fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh um, A guy that I was looking at was Justin Ross And I feel like since I was looking at him And a lot of other people were too The Ravens are not going to get him But even if, if, they, if they don't they get into that t- well. They're in that t- territory now, where if they do draft a wide receiver, it would be very, very low. And these are usually the guys that the Ravens don't play like that. So, I um, this is where drafting a receiver, not even that it's tricky, but based off of history, it wouldn't even really be a good move at this point because they wouldn't use them. They wouldn't use them. Based off of the Ravens' history, they wouldn't use them. So I'm curious to see what they do. I'm curious to see. And again, even at the end of the draft, the team won't be set yet. There's still some more free agency. There's still possible trades and whatnot. But we'll just see how it goes. But Ravens, they've been having a pretty good draft so far, man. They've been having a pretty good draft so far. Um, and uh, when you keep hearing the, the word steal, 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 this guy's a steal, steal, steal. That's always a good thing. But, but, after the draft, after it's all said and done, after the smoke clears, now you got to see how the Ravens put these guys in place. Now you got to see how the Ravens use these guys. Now you got to see if the Ravens can put these guys in positions to succeed consistently. That's the next big test after the draft. And they got a while for that because they got mini camp. They got the rookie mini camp. Then they got mini camp. They got the OTAs and all that. They got training camp, preseason. Then boom, we'll be there. But we got, we got a while to go because it's getting ready to be May now. So we got May, June, July, and August. Well, May, June, July, then August will be preseason. So, yeah, we, we about a little, little, less, little over 90 days away. So we're getting there. Oh, this going to... 90 days. That's, that's going to be like, it's a probation period. So, yeah, th- th- we, we are entering the probation period for football fans to see if you are a patient football fan, if you can really wait it out. And then you'll be put on full time once you get past the 90 days. Team, keep it clean. Appreciate y'all. Welcome Travis Jones to the Ravens, and we out.